<laughs> Someone has to be the sugar mom. <laughs> yes, Fair that's going to be the name of our suffrage club. <laughs> Amanda here. Welcome to episode 39 of Great Beer Adventure. Well, you asked for it and we are delivering. We have another roundtable for you. This time we invited a number of brewers' wives to the table to chat about what it's like from their side of things. Let's head over to Four River Brewing Company and get started. Everybody, I am sitting at the table today, and it's actually a really long table, um, at Four River Brewing Company in South Portland, Maine. We have a very special show for you today. We are doing a round table with a number of brewers' wives, and you reached out to us. You told us that you loved the round table that we did back on New Year's, so we are going to be bringing you some more. And I am so excited about today's show. I don't... I don't know why I didn't think of this, but I'm not going to take credit. I'm going to say Miss Nicole Nappy, who is one of the Brewer's Wives, is, uh, said we need to do the show. And I was like, yes, you're correct. We do. Uh, so like I said, we do have Nicole Nappy, Amy Lagasse, uh, Molly Bull, and Kelly Dorsey. And we will be chatting about what it's like to be a Brewer's Wife. Uh, also, we have Dano here taking notes, <laughs> sitting off to the side. He's going to take some pictures for you, so make sure that you head over to our show notes and look at those. But... Let's just quickly jump right into it and have the women introduce themselves. Let's start uh, with Amy Legassi. Hi, my name is Amy Legassi. I'm married to John Legassi of Four River Brewing Company. Um, we have a almost three-year-old daughter named Stella and two Labradors, Lucy and Dexter, and a crazy cat named Emma. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's me. I work full-time from home uh, for an insurance company as a project manager, and I'm here to work um, shifts whenever they need me to fill in, and here to visit and clean up and do whatever they need me to do. So Amy is not the only Four River wife here tonight. We also have Nicole Nappy with us. Hi, I'm Nicole Nappy, and my husband is TJ Hansen. And that confuses a lot of people, but I do not take his last name right now. Um, we live um, in Wyndham, and we have a fur baby, a black lab named Chevy. He's my world. Um, we have been, well, it's been a long road, but I've been working here on the weekends trying to help out, so I've been mostly scheduled on Sundays. I, too, work full-time for an insurance company, but I work in the corporate building down the road. And, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a ride right now, so... And Four River is the only brewery present at the table tonight that is open. So then we're going to go to the next opening brewery uh, with Kelly Dorsey. I'm Kelly Dorsey, and I'm married to Ian Dorsey of Mass Landing Brewing Company. And we're opening next week, which is so exciting. Yay. And so when this actually airs, it'll already be open. So make sure <gasps> that you... That's right. Yeah. Yes. So make sure you head on over there. Yeah. Um, you can continue on though. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so much like Amy and Nikki, I also work full time and the plan is to fill in on weekends and clean up and continue to be the extraordinary cheerleader that I have been for the last, uh, eight months, I guess. And, uh, we have a little boy who's one, his name's Tommy and we have uh, yellow lab Gatsby. Um, so that's our, our little family. Excellent. And last but not least, we have Molly Bull at the table. Hi, I'm Molly Bull. Um, my husband is Tom Bull, and we are opening uh, with our partners, Mark and Misha Pollan. We're opening Deer Go Brewing Company in Biddeford. And I've been um, uh, the compliance person, so to speak. Um, I'm a, a lawyer by trade, so uh, those types of things fall in my lap, but uh, really I'm just the, uh, the clerk of the works, and we're really excited to be opening in uh, Biddeford uh, 
Hopefully by the time this, broadca- this broadcast will, we will be open. <laughs> all right, so hopefully you can go out and try all of these beers uh, as, as soon as you listen to the show. Uh, if it's not the case, Deergo will be opening shortly after this episode goes live. So you best be all over the Instagram and the Twitter and checking out, making sure you, you can go get yourself some beers from these fine establishments. But that's not why we're here today. Today, we're here to figure out all the dirt that uh, you are willing to share with us, really. Because I'm sure there's plenty more that we don't necessarily get a chance to listen to. That's for off the record. Yeah, that's for for after the mics go away and more beers are poured. Um, let's, uh, Let's start, though, with way back before... This brewery uh, bug, I don't know, is, would, you, would you consider it a brewery bug? <laughs> yeah. You yes. know, bit. And back to when they first started making beer. Who would like to give a little anecdote or narrative about back in the day? Way back in the day. I will. Mm-hmm. I'll throw my husband under the bus first because <laughs> Tom T.J. Hansen used to drink Coors Light when we started dating. That was his beer of choice. And so we'd go to these places, and I'd be like, can you get a real beer, please? Because it's sort of embarrassing. I don't know how long this relationship's going to last. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so it was a good, I'd say, two years of him trying my beers out as I was drinking um, Smitty's at Rira and Huge Gritty's Fan or just Sebago, anywhere I was. And so it finally started developing a palate, and that just started. We were um, with John and Amy. They were always drinking craft beer, too. So it was basically TJ with the cores and then John and Amy and I with the craft beer. And then it just, it just took off. He became, like, I call him my rain man with beer right now. He can remember recipes or anything to a ridiculous extent. And his palate has surpassed mine, like, tremendously, and I, I don't even know what he's talking about half the point. I'm still like, I'm just drinking my beer still. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and he actually, it was for his birthday a few years, um, probably eight years ago, I don't remember time now, but that's when I just bought him a brew kit, because John had been brewing with another friend of ours, Spencer, and it was something that he was interested in. He was researching at night when we got home, and they would, they would all three of them would text John, TJ, and Constantly. Spencer all night long. <laughs> And so I'm like, well, let's just dive into it. And then it took off from there. He just, he did one, um, one that was a kit. And then after that, he was like, I'm done with kits and just started brewing on his own. Yep. That's great. Yeah. 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 And much like TJ, when John and I first started dating, he also only drank like Bud Light, Coors Light, and I would go to Gritty's every Thursday night with a group of us for Thirsty Thursday, and I started bringing him along, and again, introducing him to good beer, and he was like, oh, this is what good beer tastes like. So he got on the train, too, and um, our friend Spencer, who was also one of the people that came to Gritty's on Thursday nights, got him into brewing, because he had been home brewing for five or six years at that point. Um, so John got on on board with that as well, and it's been the same thing. He's just been experimenting and, you know, brewing for every holiday, occasion, event, our daughter's baptism and birthday, <laughs> and really any reason. Um, he turned a refrigerator into a kegerator in our basement, and I kicked him outside about two or three brews in, I was like, nope, get out. So he made himself a mash ton out of a keg (laughs) and he bought himself a big like burner and he had middle of the winter, he would shovel himself a spot and brew outside. So, so it took off, but yeah, he's same thing. It's, it's incredible that, you know, him and TJ can come up with these recipes for amazing beers and they've, you know, over the years have created such amazing beers and but he can't cook his way out of like a box of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so so somehow he got that he got that beer brewing gene. But I'm glad he did because this has been a great ride so far. And you were brave letting him actually inside brewing yep. beer. No, it was outside <laughs> from day one. Yep. So we had remember the yeast packets that were um, the packets and not smack like yeah uh-huh. smack packs. So he smacked a little too hard and that was all over our white cabinets. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So after that he ended up going to White Labs anyway, which is much better and easier to use. But yeah, that. But we did have um, 
temperature is a huge thing. So anywhere in the house, I could have a beer just from oh, yeah. anything. Anywhere. They, like they the move bedroom, around the house. Um, yeah. Spare bedroom, <laughs> living room, just hanging out by our dining. Yeah, mm-hmm. anywhere. It's where the best temperature is, Nicole. <laughs> that's what we always say. <laughs> we, the boys started... This is Kelly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, my, my story is a little bit different. I didn't get my palate with air quotes because I still don't, I don't think that I really have one per se as compared to a lot of other people. I can't, I can't take, take, like, taste mosaic or citra or like be able to figure out what that makeup is as well as everybody else. But um, the boys, so my husband Ian and two of our friends from college actually started the company and um, we, three years ago, we got one of our friends a kit for his birthday. Um, and he didn't do anything with it for a long time. And then all of a sudden he decided the day that we ripped all of our cabinets out of our kitchen, like nothing was in our kitchen except a stove. And so he decided that was the day he was going to start brewing. And that's (laughs) been it ever since. So they were brewing in our kitchen for probably like three months without like instead of putting cabinets up or the <laughs> countertops, they were brewing. Um, so, but after that, they they did a couple kits, and then um, and then they went to the green because they thought that the extract was not worth it. Um, and then we had our our third friend, who's the third partner in the business, Mike, uh, lived in San Diego for six months, and so he got deep into the West Coast style IPAs, and so he brought back a lot of really, really good stuff. Um, I thought that Stone at that point was the best that I had ever had, and then he took out a bunch of other stuff, and the Belching Beaver, and then we finally got to the Pliny, and I was like, oh my god, I'm in. Like, (laughs) this is amazing. Um, But they, so I had to be transformed, I guess. I had to be, I had to get on that. Um, bandwagon but they moved to the garage shortly Mm -hmm. after Um, and again we had even when they were were brewing in the garage to get the right temperature we had I couldn't find sweaters and I couldn't find scarves Mm -hmm. I couldn't find so many things but I would find them wrapped around a fermenter on my kid like bathroom sink (laughs) and then there's no touching it don't touch that fermenter Mm -hmm. don't move it like, are you kidding? <laughs> this is how this is how I have to live right now. But I mean, the, the fermenters are kind of like little people because they're about the size of a two-year-old, and they don't really move. So you just like mm-hmm. live around, around them. You do. You do. It's really one hundred percent. They're dressed like people. They're very temperamental. It's uh, so that's just how. We lived for a while, uh, and then the our plan was to stay in, like, to take the beer commercial, which was a huge step. Um, and thanks to Sean Sullivan and the Brewers Guild, we went to freshman orientation uh, when I was seven months pregnant, and then that was it. I said, I will not listen to another wife tell my husband that this is a really good idea, and now's the time to do it because we're gonna have a baby soon, and I don't know if we can sustain that, but. That didn't really matter, so we just did it anyway. But yeah, but long story short, obviously we're not staying in the garage. We've got 8,500 square feet in Westbrook, and it's happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's great, great story. <laughs> that's a great story. Um, mine's a little different too. Um, I feel like the grandmother here in the group, um, but at the same time, I also um, am the newbie in the group. Uh, Tom and I uh, met in 2007, and when we were uh, engaged, um, the type A in me, my my legal training, was coming out. Well, what are we going to do together when we're married? What's the rest of our life going to be like? (laughs) What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Um, And we really saw that um, our personalities and... um, uh, what we our our uh, talent, so to speak, that we brought to the table, would lend to uh, building a career uh, together and working together. 
So what was that going to look like? He has a theater background, and I have a legal um, background. And <laughs> I, neither one of us had a desire to move to Las Vegas or New York. So um, he talked to me about uh, how many years he had worked in breweries and commercial breweries um, and how much he loved brewing beer. And at that point, I had stopped drinking beer altogether, um, and I said, oh, well, that's, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, honey. <laughs> I said, so, yeah, and being the, the tangible person that I am, well, how about uh, let's brew some beer together and, and see how that's going to go. So he brewed a batch of uh, uh, common ale, and uh, we brewed it together. So I got to see what happens when the house gets turned into a, a, a brewery, a home brewery. And... Uh, and so we, we made it together, and we washed all the bottles and capped all the bottles and all of the things that you do. And, uh, and it was delicious. <laughs> Some weeks later, it was absolutely delicious. And I, you know, I, was, uh, I was blown away. So we uh, embarked on our plans to build a brewery, and we've, we've uh, uh, opened a brewery. Uh, we opened uh, Bull Jagger in 2011, and uh, it was short-lived. Uh, but it didn't mean that we ever abandoned our dream to build a brewery together. Tom brews uh, mostly German lagers. And so uh, what that means in terms of uh, putting uh, sweaters on your <laughs> fermenters um, is that we've always had uh, multiple refrigerators in our, in our homes uh, because the, the uh, fermentation process happens uh, under refrigeration. So Tom and I have been building this dream together since we met, and, uh, and that's where we're at, and it's, we're just at a really exciting time. Um, and our partners, uh, Mark and Misha Paul, and our great family people, and I did neglect to mention before that this brewery is really Max's, our fur baby, as you call him. <laughs> yeah, um, our pup Max. Uh, Max is my, um, my pupper, Terry. He comes to work with me every day, and um, he will definitely be the brewery dog at Deergo. Mm -hmm. He was here. He was. <laughs> he comes everywhere. He comes everywhere with us. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Is that, did I, is that? Yeah, that was perfect. I love how you called him a puppetary. I don't know if anybody got that. Secretary yeah. Puppetary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's genius. Yeah. That's Tom. That's that's just like his beers. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's like, like the king of loggers. He's not just like, he doesn't just brew loggers. Tom mm. Bull is lagers. It's they're delicious. They're, it's like goes with it. You know? they're, they're, I, I, I'm, I'm very thirsty right now, and it'll, it'll be fun when we can all enjoy the fruits of his labors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't have a, a puppetary because he doesn't listen, but I do have two personal assistants, one four and the other two. And as you were talking, I was like, yes, I remember that. Um, I just want to check, though, before I finish what I was going to say. Do you have cabinets now? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, nice good. granite countertops. All is, all is well. Okay, good. I was worried there for yeah, a Yeah, I was too. I was sweating it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm a little worried. I have been uh, through this whole journey witnessing breweries opening and seeing all that goes into it and um, noticing how brewers have less hair on their head and more hair on their face mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as the process goes and you guys were saying so many things, and I'm like, oh, that Brian does that. Oh, no, Brian does that. Oh, no, Brian does that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not really a fan of the beard, so mm. I don't think we should open a brewery. <laughs> Note to Brian, when you listen to this, please don't open a brewery. <laughs> Let's just go visit our friends. <laughs> Maybe, like, the short stubble, like, Bissell style, yeah. not, like, full-on nice. Oh, what, what like, Bissell, though? Bissell of uh, nice? Or no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, right, right. Tom, no, Tom, Tom did. That's Tom fair. was Grizzly Adams. He, he um, Matt Johannes uh, was Tom's assistant brewer at our former brewery, and he's since uh, graduated to become the head brewer at Baxter Brewing Company. That's right. And Tom and Maggie, uh, we introduced, uh, excuse me, um, Matt and Maggie, we introduced um, way back, many years ago, and they were married in September, and Tom didn't shave since their wedding. <laughs> wow. 
So he, and so I started calling him Grizzly Adams, and it was a long time before I noticed, frankly, because he had a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You haven't noticed yet?" And I, well, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and he said, "Well, I'm going to shave when all of the tanks arrive." Mm-hmm. So once all of the tanks were in the brewery, now he looks like he's twelve. <laughs> right? Oh, it's something. I probably want to oh, it's something. Oh, that's wow. funny. Yeah. It's just a scoot. <laughs> <laughs> I love the beard, so I guess it's good that John opened a brewery because when he was working with the state, he couldn't have it. So he had had he had been clean shaven for a long time, and I kept being like, "You need to grow it back. You need to grow it back." And it was probably a few weeks before he left the state that finally he was like, "Whatever, I'm leaving anyway," and he started growing it back. So. Is that, about it. is that what it is? Is that the reason you think behind the beard? Is that they're like, meh, I don't have to shave. No, mine was I was harassing Peter to grow one. Yeah, he has a baby both face, of ours. And I love beards, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we both like it, so. My father met uh, uh, Lindsay Gagan, Andy's wife, this past weekend. They were, uh, they were doing a uh, collaboration brew at uh, Salvage Barbecue. And my father asked Lindsay, well, how do you like Andy's beard? And she said, you know, I'm the reason he has it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably, like, nobody talks about it, but that's why Ian has a beard. Mm-hmm. Because even, so he was a financial advisor before, and he was all sketched out, well, old men won't talk to me because you're not supposed to have facial hair as a professional um, but I'm like, you're a millennial. Why are you? Whatever. <laughs> um, so I, I was a fight to keep it. And any time we had dinner with his grandmother, oh, I got to shave. Like, Why are you doing that? And then now he just has it. And so Neil and Capen, Mike, who are the partners, have the beards too because they're like, boy, it's so much less work. Like all mm-hmm. you have to do is just. I'm looking at Dano because Dano's got it too. Uh-huh. Like all oh, you I have know, to Dano do. I know Dano has it too. <laughs> he comes to my house with it. <laughs> you don't ban him from your house. It's not like it sheds. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the twits. Like they don't like keep stuff in it. And they like. <laughs> I... Peter Griffin with yeah. birds playing. Yeah. <laughs> like dinner later. I mean, it could be dinner later <sighs> on, but I don't know. Two days pretty clean. What's this on your agenda, Warren man? Said that he had like like, drops mustache nose hairs into my beer, and it freaked me out. What? Who did this? Bob nose from, hairs are different oh, than Bob a mustache. From yeah, no, like, the, the he, he told me that he didn't have boogers. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's is pretty short, too, so I don't that's know, really... He was, it was... I have a problem. <laughs> let's move on. I, I think this conversation has yeah. got a little derailed. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on to the stage of when they finally decided, all right, we're doing this. What is it like during planning? Not necessarily, yeah, we're going to do it. Woo-hoo. More like Spreadsheets. <laughs> I required a lot of spreadsheets <laughs> to say, okay, we can do this. Thank God I have health insurance. Mm-hmm. Like, tell me <laughs> what everything's going to cost and how long we can go. Like, can we do this all by ourselves? Do we need to refinance our house? Do we have to go to a bank and tell a good story that might be a little more inflated than, <laughs> than what you would, like, what's actually happening? So I just, for me personally, I said, your passion is amazing. It's inspiring. But that doesn't help us financially. So, mm-hmm. Tell me how much it's going to cost. Like, you have to break it down for me. Yeah. I think Nikki and I are both, we were, we're probably the most, an, the more analytical in our family. Yeah. And so I'm it was a Pisces, the same thing. So I'm yeah. an, I'm an we both are. Type A Pisces. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Amy's, <laughs> birthday, Amy's birthday was yesterday. So mm-hmm. what, February 22nd. Oh, and hers birthday. is Friday. <laughs> and mine's Friday. And happy yeah, birthday. But I'm like birthday. super OCD, anal Pisces, which is yeah. really like an oxymoron. <laughs> I'm a little bit more low-key. Yeah, you are. (laughs) But, yeah, I think, you know, we were both, like, same thing. Like, you know, can we actually do this? But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's funny that we both have stable jobs at large insurance companies with health insurance, and and that afforded our husbands the ability to leave stable jobs with health insurance and live their dream, which is nice. You know, it's nice to be able to help them in that Actually, yeah. I was mapping it out in my head, and I left my job of nine years in the nonprofit world to go more to the corporate world to support this. So, but with ours, though, it was up and down because we started it mm. two years ago, mm-hmm. 
and we had another um, partner, and then it didn't work out. So we've been up and down, and we've had like yeah, um, they kind of died out, and, and then died out, and then Alex came around, and then all the guys got together. So it's been and then once like last April hit, it was like okay, it's yeah. a go, and yeah. we were all in, and you know we had some family meetings, and it was very much family decisions to yeah. do this, and we kind of just decided to make it work. So. And we haven't seen the husband since. No, nope. <laughs> They're building this place. We see them for five minutes here and there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> if you bring them dinner, you see them. <laughs> so yeah. Stella and I would bring dinner a lot during the building stage so that she could see John and I could see John and we could have a little family dinner standing up in a cold brewery. And yeah. So, but, you know, some weeks it's all we got. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought about this question. This one I actually, I, I predicted that would be asked. <laughs> so, so I asked my or I told my husband on Sunday, we were walking on the beach. I said, so, you know, when they asked me, you know, how we cope with, you know, being couples and the planning period, you know, how, what do we do? I said, I'm just going to make up a bunch of lies. <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah. I, I'm going to say, you know, well, I really, you know, I make time for yoga and lots mm-hmm. of swimming and you go bike riding and skiing and <laughs> you, you know, we always get our, you know, our alone time and our together time when we're not working together. Horseshit. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, um, that's how that turned out. There's been but, lots of date nights, right? Yeah, Quality yeah, time yeah, together. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> we, we said we'd do it. We said we'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the planning, the planning um, is difficult. I think I have um, an absolute appreciation for uh, being the financial backstop for our husbands who are artists and passionate. Um, yeah. I also, uh, for better or for worse, uh, have a higher tolerance for risk. I've been in my, I've been self-employed for over ten years, and so I've, I've, I've ridden the roller coaster, and I'm used to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and those days that you, you feel like you really need to grin and bear it, you just do. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it works out. That was and my it works thing, out. too. Yeah. TJ was pretty stressed out about it, and I said... It I mean, is what it is. Yeah, I said, you just got to do it. Mm-hmm. And it happens, it happens, but how many people can say you've done this? You right. know? Even taking a chance at living your dream like this yeah. is better than never trying... It's the biggest gift. It is. I love it. And being able to do anything to support him, like support John in doing that is like, yep, absolutely. It's it's cliche, but YOLO. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are great. It took me so long to get there. Like, it's really, I work at a bank, so I'm used to being on the other side of the table. Like, I can analyze risk all day long, and it's somebody else's risk. And Mm -hmm. I can say, yep, this is going to work, and this is what you need to do. And then once you do all these things, we'll see you back in six months. We can talk about it again. And then all of a sudden, Ian was like, you know what? I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know you do. (laughs) (laughs) I know. In my bones you do. But all right, we'll do it. But it, it just, it did. It took me a little bit longer just because of our circumstances, the house and the baby, and then we didn't have everything squared away with our partners, and mm-hmm. those are things that, ducks that just have to be in a row, and they weren't, but um, it's true, it came down to the passion mm-hmm. and the decision to, for him to wake up every day and be psyched mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. like do what he's doing, and they make damn good beer. Yeah. So I was like, you don't know Let's give this yep. gift to the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A few tears are worth uh, the gift to the world. Oh, yeah. It's hey, an everybody. adjustment. I mean, it is. It's yeah. basically, well, I'm basically living a single life. Mm-hmm. I'm a single mother. Party. Yeah, you're a single mom. You know, we were, we'd get together, like, we'd have lunch, and we'd be, you know, two moms to Steli. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> But yeah, we'd be like, oh, you want to go to this birthday party? Sure. Is TJ going? I don't, I no. don't know. Maybe an hour before I can tell you. But yeah. other than that, I have no No, we idea. showed up at all of our friends' like kids' birthday parties this summer. And like her and I. Her and I and my daughter. <laughs> so. <You're the> <laughs> yeah. Can we hang out more? Yeah. 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 Come on over. <laughs> like, I had a little pity party last weekend. I was like, man, this feels weird. What is this? Oh, I miss my husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weird. But then they're around, and you're like, I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> why are you home? You're in my way. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's actually some of the reason why I started working here, too, because we are more flexible. Yeah. Um, and then Alex and Betsy, Betsy has two kids, or Alex and Betsy have two kids, but <laughs> Betsy's always with the two boys. And so um, I started just working here and being able to help out when I could just so we could not pay someone else and get in here. And I got to see TJ, so we get... Scheduled together, you know. We totally fight while we're on schedule together. And I told to go back to the brewery and I manage the bar, but yeah. But we're together. <laughs> so dreamy. Right. At, that, at this point, it's quantity time, not quality mm-hmm, time. Exactly. Yes. He doesn't know my, I'm like, those ones are clean. This gray's, gray's dirty, black's right. clean for my, um, yeah, this is my OCD kicking in. <laughs> Got a system. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I'm in the clear. You guys were talking about how, um, you know, it was like this. You must wake up. You, you know, your wife needs to be able to handle the health insurance piece. Podcasters <laughs> don't get health insurance. Mm. We can't open a brewery. Like, don't worry, guys. Yep. I won't be able to there join it is. the club. <laughs> but. Maybe I can be an honorary member because I work in beer. There you go. Absolutely. That works. Right. Yes. Excellent. Um, so now I think we're just going to, you know, we kind of started touching on this, you know, making yourself be there because they are there. Mm-hmm. Um, but can Amy and Nicole, who work for Four River, uh, no. <laughs> yes, you do yeah. work for Four River, <laughs> but <laughs> your husband, yeah. <laughs> Four River works for them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. One day. <laughs> Um, can you talk about what it was like when finally the, all the proper paperwork came through, all of the ingredients finally got to you, the beer was made, and you could open up the doors? What was that like emotion wise? Do you want to go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I it was, other, um, like. <laughs> it was, you know, I mean, it was definitely a long road to get there. So it was lots of, you know, what I remember the day the TTB came in and everything, like yeah. getting a text from John, like, oh, the heavens opened up and shined on them. And, and the eight revisions. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the day that the tanks, the, you know, the tank <laughs> debacle was long standing and uh, delayed, delayed months. And, um, So the day those, like, you know, we all followed them across the country from Oregon, and the day that they arrived in Maine was like, you know, but, um, yeah, and then it is, it's like, you know, and we joke that when the kettle came in and everything, that, you know, I came in and I was looking at it with them and they were like, and it didn't come with any instructions. (laughs) You know, kidding around, but it's like you you go from you know brewing over an open flame with a five ga- you know a five gallon pot to this, and you know the two of them just sitting there like staring at it, scratching their heads, and um, but yeah, and then you know they picked it up so quick, and I think a lot quicker than even they thought they would, and. Bob you from know. Banded Horn was a huge help yep. when they went down and brewed yep. with them. They went day. down and brewed with them, yeah. and um, we actually, John and I were just there this weekend, and he was showing me everything that they had to do while they were down there, and that was a huge help. And you know, they they're they're smart guys. They figured it out really quick and started off, and even you know, even their first batches, like you know, yeah. you'd think like, okay, there's a learning curve. Maybe the first batches wouldn't come out great, and even the first batch was like nailed it. So, so it was good. And then opening was. Crazy. It was a crazy week because we had the Thirsty Pig opening down, launch party downtown, and then this opened on Thursday. And both of our husbands are moderately socially awkward, maybe. <laughs> um, I'd say more very. Yeah. Actually, all three of them. Yeah. So it's sort of a running and they joke all, that they, they all get their to a certain point of stress, and then they just kind of shut social. down. Yeah. So, um, so there was a lot the of in the cold room, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There was a lot of pulling them back down to reality, and um, you know, but it was fun and crazy and fast and busy and busier than they thought because it was January. Yeah. And but it's been a whirlwind. That that opening week was crazy because my grandmother just passed away on January one, and so we had gone through like everything, getting all the funeral arrangements done because it was sort of unexpected. And then it was like, bam, opening week. So Thursday Pig Wednesday, and then I was here after work Thursday, Friday, and then I was here all day Saturday, and then Sunday. And I was like, I'm not doing that again. So you guys, so that's when we hired um, Kelly. Yep. And I'm like, yep. So I was here just more Saturday and Sunday, and now it's just fizzled down to just one day helping out. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of emotions. It was, 
are people going to love it? You know, mm-hmm. we love it. Is this, how is it going to work? And then it was stress. And then it's like, this is going to be great. It's going to be like the best brewery. And people right. are going to love it. And then it's just up and down, up and down. It's such a roller coaster. I mean, it, literally every day is a roller coaster with it. You never know. But it's fine. You'll get used to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you will. Ke- Kelly gets, looks a little scared right now. <laughs> oh, I'm not hiding it. I told the boys uh, a couple nights ago when they were like, well, I had to read on Facebook that we were opening March 4th. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, that's, that's yep. communication. Yep. That's, that's boy communication. <laughs> yeah, and man. But um, I was like, awesome, we've got this. Like, we have it. And it's supposed to be, uh, it started out as a soft opening. And I was like, well, we haven't done industry night. We haven't talked about any launches because they've been talking to Thirsty Pig and Yavari and Great Last Bear. And we're like, well, we've got, like, we're only on a two-barrel system. Yeah. We have two barrels right now. So I, we, there's a cutoff for us. So when we were here talking mm-hmm. to John um, last week, I was like, how much beer did you go through in that first weekend? He's like, oh, I think we were like 180 gallons or something. And I was like, Ugh. <laughs> like, that's all we have right now. <laughs> so the um, we've edited our brew schedule. Uh-huh. Um, so they're brewing twenty four seven, three sixty. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. A lot of work. A lot of work. So yeah. But those guys are. Ian is not easily um, shaken, which is an endearing quality. And Neil is. Uh, He's our head brewer. He doesn't really talk to anybody socially awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, Does he have a beard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there oh, yeah. you go. Yep. See, he fits the mold. <laughs> he, um, yeah. No, he, but he's anal retentive, and he's, he is probably the main reason why our beers are so good and so consistent, and um, we have so much faith in our product. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, Ian's going to be brewing, and Neil's just not going to talk to anybody. So we've got to <laughs> like, we got to work the line. Mm-hmm. We're only allowed to have so many people in the building at one time. It's just a, it's a lot of moving parts that I'm mm-hmm. trying to wrap my head around now, instead of waiting until the day before and being like, oh, you guys will figure it out. Cause they're not thinking about. I love them dearly, but they don't. That's not what they. That's why think about. we're here. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so are you? So you're taking on some roles of, of a compliance officer to that extent. Yes. Yes. And in terms of opening, whatever we can off off, Mike, I'd be happy to talk with you about some of that stuff. Having been through it a little bit before, yeah, um, that be would be to, amazing. I, I, I'm not saying that I know anything, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> no, tell, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what I think I know. I want <laughs> in on that. <laughs> I know. Right, right. <laughs> I'll, take I'll take it all. I'll take it all. And side note, we took Tommy to uh, the Thirsty Pig for yep. Four Rivers opening, mm-hmm. and that was his first birthday. Nice. It's so a good way to celebrate <laughs> your first birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he looked like The Walking Dead, but... What beer did he like? Good time. I know. <laughs> well, our daughter likes to play going to the brewery, and the other day she was like, Daddy, we need to go to the brewery and brew beer for my birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll be three in March. So. Nice. Mm. She'll have no teething problem. Uh-uh. Nope. No. Uh, that's what we like to do here at Great Beer Adventure, connect people. <laughs> um, so just as a wrap-up, if you can give just one piece of advice to a wife of a brewer or a future brewer, you know, think me, <laughs> what, what, would you, what would you say to them? Be flexible and have really good health insurance. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say be patient. Cheerleading. I never thought I'd get into it, but I am definitely uh-huh. a cheerleader now. And yeah, health insurance. <laughs> Someone has to be the sugar mama. <laughs> yes, Fair that's going to be the name of our suffrage club. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I would say uh, love your brewer, love your beer, uh-huh. yes. love their beer. Uh, yeah, patience is everything. Um, great beer takes time. It does. Yep. Well, thank you so much, ladies. We really appreci- uh, uh, appreciate. <laughs> it's a new word I'm making up. <laughs> we really appreciate you sitting down with us and chatting about this. It's been a lot of fun to get to know you all a little bit more. Um, and cheers. 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 <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I know, it's empty. Oh, oh right. With empty well, glasses? I'm doing, I'm doing, yeah. <laughs> they all have here.
thank you to Amy, Nikki, Molly, and Kelly for sitting down with us. And thank you to all of you who listen in. Be sure to check out our show notes for links to each of the breweries at the table today by going to greatbeeradventure.com slash 039. And if you have any further questions for the ladies, let us know by hitting us up on Twitter at greatbeerwomen. The music throughout today's episode is by Old Etc. out of Biddeford, Maine. To learn more about them, head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash music. We have new things headed your way every week and can't wait to share them with you. Special thanks to our behind-the-scenes guru, Dano Pugach. Today's episode was created, produced, and edited by me, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. Have a fabulous day, and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Want to know more? Be sure to find us on Instagram at Great Beer Women. If you haven't done so already, be sure to head over to greatbeeradventure.com slash subscribe to subscribe. That way, you'll be the first to know when a new episode goes live. Also, don't forget to tell your friends about us. A small party is fun, but a huge party is extraordinary. Let's get more people knowing about beer in the great state of Maine. Great Beer Adventure is part of the Great Pint Society. Does anybody want more beer? Yes, please. Mm, Thank you. I like water. Yes, please. Why don't I try? I love it. That's great.